We begin CBS 2 News at 5 with breaking news. Within the past few minutes, we have learned a 35-year-old quadruple murder case in Chino Hills is getting a new look. Governor Brown is ordering new DNA testing of evidence. Yeah, right now, Kevin Cooper is on death row for the 1983 hatchet and knife murders of Doug and Peggy Ryan, their 10-year-old daughter and 11-year-old neighbor, Christopher Hughes. The Ryan's 8-year-old son, Joshua, survived despite his throat being slashed. Cooper said he was framed. Senator Kamala Harris and Kim Kardashian are among those who urged Governor Brown to authorize new tests. And now to this, part of a century-old Inland Empire church, a charred mess now, flames ripped through just before Christmas. The congregation at Magnolia Presbyterian Church isn't going to let that fire, though, or the water damage for that matter, stop them for celebrating Christmas. CBS 2 Inland Empire reporter Tina Patel is live in Riverside where tonight's Christmas Eve service will in fact go on. Hi, Tina. Yeah, church members say they are so devastated to see a building that meant so much to them so badly damaged. But they do say that their faith is still strong and that's why they felt the need to celebrate Christmas Eve here tonight. Volunteers have spent the day trying to salvage what they can from the Magnolia Presbyterian Church, but there is a lot that has been burned beyond recognition. We are telling ourselves that it, church is not about a building, it's about the people. But this was a building that has been around since the 60s and held special meaning for many Riverside families. I was buried here, my kids were baptized here, so uh, definitely a lot of memories. Investigators still don't know what sparked the fire Sunday night. All they know is it started in a room just behind the sanctuary where equipment for the church organ was held. Could have happened at any time, but um, luckily no one was here. Um, no one got hurt, so that's a blessing. But the church had been expecting a large crowd for tonight's Christmas Eve service. Now they're scrambling to make room in their original sanctuary, which can't hold quite as many people. The pastor says she never considered canceling services. I think people are going to need that to get, gather as a community just for reassurance and know that, you know, we'll get through this. She says she's already been uplifted seeing the amount of support, not only from her congregation, but from nearby churches who have offered their help as well. And it is the light in the midst of the darkness, which is exactly what this season is about. The original church was built at this site back in 1880, and that's why church leaders say even if this building can't be saved, they will rebuild because they say it is their mission to serve this community. As for the Christmas Eve services, they are going to get underway at 7 p.m. Live in Riverside, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. Tina, thank you. Last minute shoppers have crowded into local malls all day long, hoping to get just the right gift for everyone on their shopping list. Time is running out to get the right gift to put under that tree, but many last minute shoppers say they were also hoping for some last minute deals. CBS 2's Brittany Hopper is live now among shoppers in Glendale. Hi, Brittany. Hey there. Well, you know what? It seems like everyone had the same idea today. Let me move out of the way. Take a look. It's getting a little bit slower here at the mall, but I'll tell you what. Earlier today, it was jam packed here. Everyone getting those last minute gifts. You can feel the hustle and bustle in the air to get those last minute gifts for under the Christmas tree. Why are you procrastinating? Because I am too busy for work. You almost procrastinated on that answer. That's right. You're, you're really smart. <laughs> Procrastination and maybe you get the better deals last minute. A few last minute stocking stuffers. Over at the Glendale Galleria, shoppers were getting everything from toys to clothes to even jewelry. We had like several bags. We had to drop them off because they were so heavy. <laughs> Who are you shopping for last minute like this? Um, myself and my parents. <laughs> the Herrera family has even made it easier on those last minute shoppers by providing free gift wrapping at the mall. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. We're here to celebrate Christmas with our families and kids and bring the Christmas spirit back. And even though the spirit felt a bit more frantic, many of the employees at the mall were feeling festive. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! 
Now you still have time. One more hour. This mall will stay open for another hour, 6 p.m. If you still need to get that last minute gift. We are live tonight in Glendale. Brittany Hopper, uh, CBS 2 News. All right, Brittany, thank you. Tonight, people are also racing to get home in time for Christmas. Here's a live look at LAX. Things are moving pretty smoothly there. The airport wow. doesn't look to be uh, nearly as busy this evening as it has been in the past few days. No, they said that, you know, they say that this is the day to travel. I guess they're yep, right. Yep. Okay, the weather so far, Evelyn, it's cooperative. But what about tomorrow? Tomorrow, a completely different story. And you wouldn't believe it because it was just sunny, a little hazy, beautiful out there. Somebody asked me today, they said, when are we going to get rain? And I said, tomorrow. They looked dumbfounded. <laughs> I mean, it didn't feel like it today at all. But you will tell just by the map right here that we've got winter weather advisories and store high surf advisories, wind advisories, rain over Northern California right now and the Sierra. And we are expecting a lot more of it as we move into tomorrow. A lot more here. That is so as we get a look at satellite radar at the moment, we are mostly dry. You'll see mostly dry conditions on satellite radar, but that is set to change pretty soon. Of course, coming up in a little bit, we're going to take you through your future cast and show you exactly when and where we're expecting that rain and all that good stuff. We've got Christmas around the corner, so we've got to plan accordingly, even though I think a lot of us might want to stay in and stay cozy. So that's yeah. good news for all of you that want to do that. <laughs> Back to you. I'd like to do that. <laughs> Me too. They always make it look happy, don't they? <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah, but there's very little. Well, that's because they, they get to sit, stand up there and ring the big They're bell. They're all excited about that. Very little to cheer about today on yeah. Wall Street this Christmas Eve. Stocks took another huge nosedive. CBS 2's Chris Holmstrom is live in the newsroom for us with a look at what may be scaring investors. Chris, hi. Sheridan, Jeff, most analysts, they are in agreement on one thing. Wall Street likes certainty, and they say that's not what they're getting from the Trump administration. Now, here's a look at the numbers, if you can just bear watching them. Well, the Dow plunged more than 653 points today, nearly 3% of its value wiped out in a day. The NASDAQ and S&P 500, they joined in on the fall, losing 140 and 65 points respectively. Well, experts say a number of factors from the Trump administration are contributing. Well, first this, this tweet from the president. He wrote, the only problem our economy has is the Fed, meaning the Federal Reserve, which has been hiking interest rates. Mr. Trump continues, they don't have a feel for the market. They don't understand necessary trade wars or strong dollars or even democratic shutdowns over borders. The Fed is a powerful golfer who can't score because he has no touch. He can't putt. Well, the head of the Fed, Jerome Powell, has been on the job since February. Well, now he may be out of a job. According to the Washington Post, the president, livid over the number of interest rate hikes this year, asked whether he could fire Powell. Well, that apparently set off a chain reaction in Washington, also on Wall Street. It also prompted Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin to tweet out a statement from the president saying he never suggested firing Powell. And speaking of Mnuchin, who recommended Powell to be the Federal Reserve chairman, he apparently scared bankers, economists, and also financial analysts yesterday. He tweeted a statement saying he had called the CEOs of the six largest banks to confirm they had, quote, ample liquidity to loan out money. Well, it was meant to calm the markets, but experts say the unusual move backfired. One economist said suggesting you might not know something that no one else is worried about creates more unease. But the experts say other uncertainties scaring Wall Street include the government shutdown, the trade war with China, and Brexit. Back to you in the studio. Not exactly a science, is it? All right, thanks. So many have broken rank in the Trump administration. It's actually becoming the norm. And now the president is retiring his secretary of defense earlier than expected. As CBS 2's Mola Lenghi reports, tension over what Jim Mattis wrote in his resignation letter might be to blame. President Trump is temporarily replacing outgoing Defense Secretary Jim Mattis with his deputy, Patrick Shanahan. I think the president no longer relied on Mattis to be able to deliver the president's vision. Shanahan joined the Defense Department in 2017 after working at Boeing for more than three decades and is a strong advocate for Mr. Trump's Space Force. This administration's highest priority is your safety and security. Mattis resigned last week after the president's decision to pull all 2,000 U.S. troops out of Syria. Over the weekend, the president rejected his offer to stay on the job until February. Shanahan takes over January 1st. Mattis's sudden departure has triggered widespread concern here in Washington, even among members of the president's own party. Some devastating decisions 
are being made uh, even with people giving strong input uh, in the opposite direction. Sunday, Mr. Trump tweeted that Turkey's president will eradicate whatever is left of ISIS in Syria, adding, and he is a man who can do it. Muslims need to ultimately police Muslim lands. When Americans are there and we kill someone who lives there, they see it as a religious affront. This morning, the president continued to make a case for the pullout, saying, in part, we are substantially subsidizing the militaries of many very rich countries. General Mattis did not see this as a problem. I do, and it is being fixed. Mololengi, CBS 2 News. Right now, back to government uncertainty. It is day three of the partial government shutdown, which is now expected to stretch into the new year. The House and Senate gaveled in, and then they gaveled out. They're not going to be back in session until Thursday. While Congress is closed, the White House is open. The president met with his Homeland Security team over border security, and then he tweeted, I am all alone, poor me. The White House waiting for the Democrats to come back and make a deal on desperately needed border security. One lawmaker says someone will give in eventually. Most people on the other side have voted for some degree of uh, border security and the wall or the fence or the barrier, whatever we want to call it, uh, before. Uh, there is a path towards our um, responsibly appropriating about $1.3 billion for border security. That offer was rejected by Republicans as well as the White House. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's office says both sides remain very far apart. Tonight, prosecutors say they will criminally charge actor Kevin Spacey for an alleged sexual assault at a Nantucket, Massachusetts bar. The district attorney there says the incident allegedly happened in July of 2016. Spacey is due in court on January 7th for arraignment. He's been the subject of several allegations, but these are the first charges he has faced. But in a bizarre post on YouTube today, Spacey appeared to address those sexual assault allegations. The three-minute video titled, Let Me be frank has Spacey in character as late House of Cards President Frank Underwood. He's wearing a Christmas apron and washes his hands as he talks. Of course, some believed everything and have just been waiting with bated breath to hear me confess it all. They're just dying to have me declare that everything said is true and that I got what I deserved. Wouldn't that be easy if it was all so simple? Spacey goes on today that uh, conclusions can be so deceiving and hints that a comeback is imminent. No comment from Netflix, which produces House of Cards, by the way. Well, tonight, Lakers superstar LeBron James is apologizing for an offensive post on social media. Yeah, the backlash was swift, and NBA League officials did investigate. Jamie Maggio is here now. For Kind of fill us in on the controversy. Yeah, yeah this is uh, uncharacteristic uh, for LeBron James, but he is facing criticism after he posted a video on Instagram stories on Saturday of him rapping along with a song. Quoting a song by the rapper 21 Savage, LeBron posted, including the line, quote, We've been getting that Jewish money, everything is kosher. Well, the league office accepted his explanation that he made a mistake, according to ESPN, and he will not be punished. LeBron told ESPN, quote, Apologies for sure if I offended anyone. That's not why I chose to share that lyric. I always post lyrics. That's what I do. I ride in my car. I listen to great music. And that was the byproduct of it. So I actually thought it was a compliment. And obviously it wasn't through the lens of a lot of people. My apologies. It definitely was not the intent, obviously, to hurt anybody. Uh, LeBron and the Lakers will be in the national spotlight tomorrow on Christmas Day when they take on the Golden State Warriors. So, yeah. Jeff, Sharon, back to you guys. A couple of head scratchers back to back yeah. there between LeBron yeah. and Kevin Spacey. Huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, Jamie. Uh, searching for signs of life in Indonesia. The death toll is quickly rising after a devastating tsunami slammed the coast with no warning. A pregnant woman stranded when the campfire broke out around her tonight. The reunion with the emergency worker who saved her life. Forget last minute shopping. This is the last minute rush for tamales. We'll tell you about the tasty tradition coming up.